So Michelle Millsporter, thank you for joining us at Pathway Group offices. Thank you for obviously being our speaker today at Coffee and Atta. Thank you much so pleasure. much. Thank you so much. Thank I know you. I know you've just come from holiday. We're probably feeling jet lagged. Was it yesterday or the day before that you just yesterday landed? I got back. So yeah, yeah I'm extremely jet lagged. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I hear that you go every day to a particular destination, and we'll cover we'll cover a little bit about that. Uh, just before we go into that, what would you talk talk about today? So I talk about um, I spoke about um, humanity. Humanity. today which is lessons from the tsunami yeah um so i guess it was um, a real turning point for me and my vocation in yeah. terms of what i do so it's what i learned during the tsunami yeah. why i feel that's a message that should be shared with other people yeah um and um and you know for people that aren't going to go through such a life and death situation um how they can have the same lessons as well and learn to adopt them and use them in their own life if they find them useful. Yeah, yeah. Uh, okay, we'll, we'll, we'll talk a little bit about obviously your, your journey to, because obviously that's, that's a story on its own in terms of, you know, the, the, the experience that you've had and so forth. Uh, but before I, before, before we get into that, uh, I, I th uh, there's a, you know, there's a congratulations that I, that I, that I, I need to give you in terms of your, your, uh, your appointment. Uh, in terms of PSA, <laughs> Thank you. Uh, uh, tell us a little bit about your role in terms of obviously PSA now, and your role in terms of obviously public speaking. Your sort of the the route that you've that you've that you've, you've gone through. Okay, well, um, public speaking is something that I've been paid to do for quite a long time. Yeah, and I have a lot of friends, long term friends, who have been saying for many years, "Oh, Michelle, you ought to join the PSA, yeah. the Professional Speaking Association." Yeah. Um, and I kind of, well, I didn't really understand the benefits. Yeah. So for a long time, I, I, I didn't do anything about it. Yeah. Um, and then just over a year ago, I'd been masterminding with some people who were very well respected in the PSA. And I realised I was the only person in the room that wasn't a member. And yeah. I thought, it's time, these for, are, it's time to, yeah, time these to are look the, at this year. These are the kind of people that I want to be masterminding with and networking with. And yeah. maybe this is something I need to look at. So yeah. I went along to a, a meeting. I was invited free of charge to attend, yeah. which is what we always do in Birmingham. So first time guests can come free of charge. Yeah. And I went along and um, I saw what it was about. Yeah. Um, what tends to be the format, sorry, Michelle, in terms of the... Well, it's yeah. the monthly meetings. Basically, you get to see um, one of the top PSA speakers doing a keynote um, and maybe a couple of others people doing showcases where they want to do talk and they want to get feedback from yeah. other people. Yeah. So we share an awful lot of, uh, of stuff about yeah. the industry. Yeah. Um, and it's a great place to network and, you know, people form mastermind groups together and all sorts of stuff. So I'd, I kind of joined just over a year ago and I went to my first mega, which is the three day event. Yeah. Um, so back in 2015. And I was literally blown away. I mean, I just, I couldn't believe how many international famous speakers they've got on the stage just pouring their hearts out and delivering their stuff to us. I think as a result of that, within just a year, not only have I been really, really heavily involved, but I've also become a fellow which means that I finally have letters after that. <laughs> Just with that, my, yeah. my nan would be proud. Yeah. Um, and, and also I've taken over as regional president um, in the Midlands, which wow. I'm very, very proud of. A lot of responsibility there in terms of obviously, you know, with, with, with the members as well, and to also in terms of taking that forward, the association itself is a long-standing long association and a lot of responsibility. It is, and I've, I've got a fantastic network, and I've realised that all the networking groups that I've ever run yeah. um, has always been full of people who do similar things, coaches, trainers, um, leadership and development, and people that need to be speaking. Yeah. So I thought, do you know what? These are the people that need to be speaking more. Yeah. So, um, and the, uh, the, the catchphrase in the PSA is speak more, speak better, and that's exactly what the PSA teaches you to do. Yeah. So within a year, people have said to me, Michelle, you've just got twice as good as you were. Yeah, well. So just being in the PSA for a year and being saturated with all that knowledge um, and all of that information, if that can increase my career, my ability to speak, um, then it, it can do that for everyone. Yeah. And it, it really is a tribe that I'm proud to belong to. Yeah, it's a community, yeah. Uh, Mich Mich Michelle, you mentioned the fact that you, you're, you're privileged, uh, you're, you're positioned yourself to be, to be paid for speaking. 
but generally the speaking industry or the people looking to do to go into speaking uh, are, are not are not as fortunate as that. I mean, just tell us a little bit about how somebody would be able to progress if they wanted to make this as a career. Is that is is there opportunities to to become a, a paid public speaker? Yeah, well, I, I guess I was kind of lucky, I suppose. Yeah. I was involved in the Chambers of Commerce and I'd won a couple of awards in the Chambers of Commerce. So um, when I was asked to speak, I, I wanted to give back wholeheartedly. Yeah. Yeah. So I kind of started doing it and yeah. kind of and fell into it. And then um, I was approached by a couple of organisations that are connected to the Chamber that said, can you speak on this subject and that subject? So um, I, I got into that fairly early. But even now, I do a lot of, of free speaking yeah. events. Um, and sometimes people think that there's a you know stigma attached. Do professional speakers still speak at free events? Well, of course they do. It's a fantastic way to generate new relationships. It's a fantastic way to be able to meet new communities of people yeah. and to give. And that is what networking key, is about. Yeah. That's the key. That's what yeah. That's yeah. what business is about. Yeah. I mean, you talk about networking. I mean, you you've been a speaker at, at our previous event, the Coffee and at uh, Worcester. Yeah. You know, obviously you, we're lucky to have you today. Uh, uh, you know, you've been known as a, as as a queen of networking. I mean, that's the title that that we we've known you for. And we, you know, you're, you know, you 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 uh, you're uh, you, you're in you're in that circle of networking. Let's talk. Just tell us a little bit about how how did it start for you in terms of networking? What sort of networking have you been involved with? Where are you now in terms of you know what? You know, where are you now in terms of networking per se? Just. Just, just some thoughts on that, please. Okay. Well, I'm, I'm pretty glad that networking came along as a subject yeah. because otherwise I'd probably get told off at work for talking <laughs> too much and spending too much time having yeah. coffee with people because yeah. I was naturally, I did it naturally. Yeah. Uh, so when a label came out, you know, I, yeah. could, I could just say, it's, I'm just networking. Yeah. Uh, so it's a good excuse for me. Um, but I guess I've always been a connector. I love communication, especially human communication. Um, and so it's always been very natural to me. Um, so I guess I didn't really do an awful lot of networking while I was employed. Yeah. It was only when I started my own business back in you know 2000 that I started to do more networking. Um, but it, again, it was one of those things that I threw myself into. Um, and I ended up launching um, the Worcestershire Business Club um, which was, you know, fairly, they carried on. Yeah. I was only there for a year before I moved on. Um, and then I launched Uber Groups. Now, Uber Groups was my concept. It was a different kind of networking. Um, and it was it was so massively successful. Yeah. Um, and we used to have an electric chair yeah. every every month. We had an electric chair. And one person, say you as a business owner, would sit in that electric chair. And you would tell your story and tell people why you do what you do and how you got into it and emotionally connect with everyone else in the room. The result of that emotional connection was that people would write out referrals, which we called golden opportunities. Wow. And in, in, in 20 minutes of one person sitting down telling people why they do what they do, we found that we could get 50, 60, 70 golden opportunities from one group of people. Wow. Which was just phenomenal. So it was a, and and we were very lucky. Um, we won. We um, we came runners up in best networking um, group of the year at yeah. the Midlands Business Awards. Yeah. And, and the year previous to that, I'd uh, I'd come runner up as networker of the year in the Midlands. Um, and so yeah, i done. It. And then I was approached by the Global Networking Council, yeah. who gave me um, the most incredibly silly title of, <laughs> of global networking giant yeah. which has got people that's not silly, in it that's not silly at all is it global it, networking giant it's well people yeah. say it sounds a little bit full of yourself i'm a global networking <laughs> giant but if you there's there's only i think there's only about 70 of us yeah you have people like um, brian tracy yeah. and bob berg wow. Wow. and chris akabusi and then little old me no no so I was chuffed to bits. You do have to go through quite a strict interview process. And that whole organisation was run by Rob Brown, wow. who has taught me a lot about networking and is a very, very He's a very good author, yeah, yeah, very fantastic author as well. He's, yeah, 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 yeah. He's, he's, yeah, he's astonishing. And I was lucky enough to be in a mastermind meeting, uh, a mastermind group with him um, for a little while. And he's, he's phenomenal. Um, and I think that whole thing has moved on now and it's called something slightly different. Yeah. But it's still a fantastic research. So anyone who wants to know what the global networking giants think is good about networking, uh, it's a free resource for them to find out. Okay, you've got a book uh, that uh, you've, uh, you've, you've, you've written, you've, yes. you're, you're author of. Okay. Just tell us a little bit about the book and how that came about and 
to share that with us. Okay. Well, Phone Genius, the Art of Non-Visual Communication. Oh, fantastic um, title. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I think I called it Phone Genius because, uh, well, I just, I wanted to put a stake in the sand, I'll be honest with you. Yeah. A lot of people knew me for the phone work that I did, and I just... I'm just really good at communicating over the phone and my first business. So that's your piece of that phone, you know, you want to look at that, is that yeah. in terms of mobile phones or phone, phone as a whole? It's just, Tempting it's literally just how you break down doors. How do you call the marketing director at Microsoft and get an appointment Does that with work? Him? Does cold I did call, it. Yeah, cold calling work? Yes. Yeah. People say cold calling's dead, they're just not doing it right. Yeah. If I got an, an appointment with the marketing director at Microsoft, then so can you. Yeah. Um, you know, and I've had appointments with the vice president of global marketing at Sony Ericsson. These are people I've and you, and you can get the through the gatekeeper, call. and you can do all of you know. You can yeah. you can get the call. You can you yeah, can. absolutely. Wow. The trick is not to try and get through the gatekeeper. I mean, I would like to shake people by the neck when they say how to get through the gatekeeper. Because it's actually the people, talking to the gatekeeper. Exactly. Yeah. You engage with them. They're human beings. Give them respect and let them give you respect back. If you haven't got anything worthwhile ringing that person about, yeah. don't bother. Yeah. But yeah, the book is all about um, the way that we communicate over the phone is quite different from the way we communicate face to face. So if we strip our visual senses altogether, then what we can find is what some blind people can find. Yeah. If they lose their visual sense, then they can somehow enhance their enhance other senses. Other senses yeah. doesn't always work that way, but if you try and try and try and train yourself to do that, you can. It's the same when you're working on the phone. Yeah. And I discovered it by finding that people used to say to me, Michelle, are you psychic? When I was on the phone, no, I'm not psychic, I'm just listening in the way that other people don't listen because I've switched up my hearing. Yeah. So I was really um, privileged that Daniel Kish, a.k.a. the Batman yeah, yeah. from America, yeah, when yeah. he heard what I was doing, yeah. he wrote a piece in my book. Now, he teaches blind kids wow. how to um, play sports and navigate the world through echolocation. Um, and I'm really pleased to say that we've become friends since then. Yeah. Um, and that whole concept of switching up your other senses yeah. is something that builds subconscious rapport and gives you the edge over everyone else. Yeah. So you can create relationships that are virtually impenetrable by the competition because you have such rapport. Okay, fantastic. Uh, Michelle, I also know, know you as, uh, as uh, uh, with your involvement with Ensize. You're the CEO of Ensize. Can, we, can you just tell us a little bit about what Ensize is and your involvement? Yeah. And, and, uh, and uh, you know, disc profiling and all the sort of profiling stuff sure. that you do. Well, behaviour profiling behavior is profiling, something. Behaviour profiling, yeah. Yeah, behaviour profiling is something that I've done for many years. Yeah. And again, it's about understanding people at a deeper level. Yeah. So it's not only about understanding yourself, what motivates you, what drives you, uh, what you should stay away from, yeah. uh, but it's also about learning to see behaviour in other people. Yeah. So Nelson Mandela, um, as I've just presented yeah. one of my slides, it's my favourite quote ever, he says, if you talk to a man in a language he understands, that goes to his head. Yeah. If you talk to a man in his language, that goes to his heart. Yeah. Now, we all talk, even though we're still speaking English, yeah. we all talk in a different language. Yeah. So it's understanding the language patterns that allow us to be able to understand what's going to work for that person. Yeah. So if I'm talking to you and you're very results-oriented and fast-paced and bullet points, if I start asking you about, oh, how are the kids? And, yeah. you know, did you have a lovely time on holiday? Yeah. You're going to get annoyed with me. <laughs> so I have to try and understand what it is that you want from the relationship. Yeah. And I can do that through behaviour profiling. Yeah. And it was during the aftermath of the tsunami that that was really highlighted for me. It was, um, it was a massive learning curve yeah. in terms of understanding... Um, what human beings were about and why we did what we did, why yeah. we behaved the way we do. Yeah. So my learning curve went like that. Yeah. And when I came back, um, the message that I had is that human beings are magnificent. Yeah. What they do for each other is incredible. But we only do it when it's a life or death situation. We don't know how to get our magnificence out of our bag. Yeah. So with behaviour profiling, I can help people do that. I can fast track them. 
and help show them where their magnificence lies and help them to be is this authentic. Similar, is this similar, Michelle, to sort of learning styles? You know, they talk about visual, auditory, kinesthetic, VAK models and different you know, ways that people learn. Is, it, is that similar? Or, I think that uh, all comes from NLP, from, your yeah. linguistic programming, yeah. and it's a very similar subject in the fact that it's a soft skill and it's about subconscious communication. Yeah. So in that sense, yes, it is. Right. Um, N-Size found me. And this is why you should have a really good LinkedIn profile. because They found you through LinkedIn? Yeah, they? they found me through LinkedIn. And they sent me a message um, saying, I want to add you to my network. And I sent my standard response, which is, I you know, really value my network, so I know everyone that I connect with. So if you'd like to send me a personal message, then yeah. I'd be really happy to connect. Yeah. And it was at that point that the founder of Ensize, Anders Janssen, um, picked up the phone to his brother, Martin Janssen, and said... I think I've just found someone in the UK who's got a really good network. She's very um, concerned about a network and she might be a really good person for us to connect with. So they rang me and they told me about the system they have. Um, and and so basically um, they said they were coming over to the UK to meet me. Yeah. So I said, that's fine. Tell me yeah. when you're coming over and I'll arrange something. And they yeah. said, no, no, no. If we come over to the UK, we're purely coming to come see to you. Come to see you, yeah. So I thought, okay, okay, they're quite good at this behaviour profiling yeah. stuff because they've got me down to yeah. a team. They made me feel very special. Yeah. So, um, so I, I, you know, they came and they showed me um, the system that they had, which go, which is far better than anything that I've ever seen. Yeah. It's it's based on DISC, which is the work of William Moulton Marsden. Yeah. But there is another element, which is based on the work of Edward Spranger, that looks at our core values as a human being and what's going on in our life around us at the moment. And that actually drives our behaviour. And we call those driving forces. So it's it's the work of two intellectual gods, in my opinion, Destroyed brought together, together in this combination report, which for me just gives me all the answers. Wow, wow. I mean, we started our conversation with talking about tsunami, and I said, well, we'll cover that a little bit. I mean, if you, if you can, I mean, I know we've, we've spoken a few times regarding this particular story, and, uh, and, and uh, anybody who's done any research on you, is, you know, can, can, can see the story there. But just share very briefly, if, if, if you can, Michelle, in terms of obviously yeah. you know, that, that whole sort of period. If, if, if you can. Well, very briefly, yeah. I was on a diving holiday. Um, there was about 14 of us that went over from the UK together. Yeah. We'd all learnt to dive together yeah. in the UK. And we went on this fantastic holiday. And we stayed in a hotel in Hikadua in Sri Lanka, um, right next to the hotel. Um, and, um, yeah, basically, the tsunami hit. Yeah. Um, and it was... What happened in the aftermath of that tsunami? What people did for each other, the way they worked together, um, the you know the wonderful things that I saw in humanity that changed my life. And it took a long while for the penny to drop. It didn't happen immediately. It wasn't like a you know a, a sign. It, it took a long time for me to, to digest that information, so realize what it meant, let it grow, let it develop. And then it, it finally all came together. And I realised that my, um, my biggest classroom was the week I spent as a refugee in Jimmy Lal's garden. And Jimmy Lal is this village elder who owned several companies and employed most of the village. And he opened up his garden to 150 of us refugees. Yeah. Um, and it's during that time that I learned all those lessons that have never left me. Yeah. So now what I do is I, I try and help people to understand what their own magnificence is and use that in, um, in the way that they do business and moving forward. So it wasn't, it's not a, oh, woe is me, what a shame I was in the tsunami. Yeah. It's, it's more about lessons from extreme adversity yeah. and what humans do when they're faced with that yeah. Um, yeah. and then understanding a little bit more about the way that we tick. Yeah. Michelle, thank you so much for sharing that with us. I know we've we've spoken a few times about this as well, and it's always sort of touches me as well when you when you when you mention this. Um, obviously, we've had a fantastic event today at, at uh, Pathway to Glow Coffee, and I tell you, sec your second time as well. It really, is, yeah. really appreciate that. Uh, how was it generally for you? I mean, how, you know, what's, I have what's the general vibe that you, you got? To I have to say, they are yeah. they're not the biggest events. You know, um, they're very well attended. Um, they're not they're not the biggest events. Um, but I think they're probably one of the warmest. 
And I think that is really key. I think it's something to do with the people that you have as directors. Um, with Khaled, for instance, yeah. I've, we've created, we've just developed such a lovely relationship. Yeah. Um, and he's just such a warm person yeah. and he's so giving yeah. and what he does from the second that you walk in the room he connects, very quickly he connects other people yeah. to each other yeah, yeah. and he gives gives gifts um, and that is reflected in the way that other people behave yeah. in response because human beings are like that in yeah. a little way if you, the way that I act with you yeah. is going to determine yeah. the way you respond to me yeah. so the, I think the, the, the essence that he's giving out and the messages he's giving out um, that's what he gets back from yeah. everyone that attends yeah. these meetings. And I'm thrilled to be invited to speak here. I love these events and um, I hope I really appreciate get all invited your support, to some more. Michelle, really appreciate all your support. Just for one final thing, you mentioned a word called tribe and we talk about community ourselves. Mm. You know, you know, what, what's, what sort of, I mean, you mentioned it again, you know, possibly a, a sort of a, a USP for us in terms of our networking, uh, networking brand. But if somebody wanted to create a community, a tribe, or whatever the the word is, what sort of words of advice can you give? Uh, obviously, you know, you know, with your experience as networking, with your experience in terms of uh, behavior profiling, all of the stuff that you've got in terms of, you know, obviously, you know, what what sort of last last sort of words from you in terms of advice uh, that you could give to anybody looking. Well, to I think my key um, message is always authenticity. You've authenticity, got to do yeah. what's in your heart. Yeah. Yeah, and. Um, you, if you've got gut instinct, that yeah. is that's designed. You, the basal ganglia is part of the brain that helps you with gut instinct, yeah. gives you a whack in the stomach if you need <laughs> to be alerted to something. Yeah. It's a it's a real phenomenon. It's not it's not just a feeling. So people should listen yeah. to um, to their gut instinct and they should listen yeah. to their heart and they should uh, find their authenticity. If you network with people that share the same values, values yeah. then that's what makes it work. Okay. That's what makes these relationships inseparable. Yeah. Michelle, thank you so much for your time. Really appreciate all your assistance. Thank you, Michelle. Thank you. Thank you.